Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Touch OSC. I'm Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer. Uh, today we're going to take a look at updates in Touch OSC Mark II. So Touch OSC has been out for a while, and Mark II, the current version that we're all using, came out in the summer of 2021. And I did my first video about Touch OSC, uh, which is something like 14,000 views now, back in November of 2021. And since then, there have been a lot of changes. So we're going to take a look at a few of those that really uh, help the program and make your life a little bit easier. Uh, but there isn't much information about these updates, so I just want to make sure that you know about them uh, because they are incredibly helpful. So to take a look at these, let's go into the editor, and I'm working on this on a desktop because uh, it's kind of the easiest way to see these updates. So this template may look familiar. It's one from a previous video, and it has a few different buttons and faders and interesting things in it. But let's say it's been a while since you've worked in your TouchOSC template, and you are remapping your template to your DAW, or maybe you're changing DAWs, and you need to see what all of the different signals are. Well, there's a great way to view this without having to go into each button like you used to have to do. So you're gonna to go to View, and then Message Mapping. And this is all of our messages. So you can see we've got uh, different buttons, a fader, and it is a CC change, and what is going on with that change. It also will show any OSC messages, local messages, and uh, any gamepad messages, which is something we haven't talked about yet, but don't worry. And of course, this local message had to do with color changing, specifically the color red. So this is a great way to stay organized and to see what's going on in your template. And you can even export this. Uh, why? I don't know but you could save a CSV file and it'll come out like this. And it will be all of your different messages. You can see uh, it all neatly organized, which is very useful. I don't know about you, but uh, remembering all of the different signals that you're sending from different buttons and faders, or if you have a different CC controller, uh, some sort of MIDI mixer like this or something else, extra faders, it can be really difficult to remember what you're doing or if you ever change these. So I actually have my own Excel spreadsheet that keeps everything really organized. And it's a great way for me to remember and keep track of all of the different settings in my templates, especially because my templates will adjust and change as my workflow changes. Another thing that's nice about the message mapping is that if you were curious about which one is button 12, you can select that double click it, and it selects it for you in the template. A nice way to get around if you, like me, forget what you do from time to time. So message mapping, a great way to stay organized in your template. For the next update, let's take a look at a blank file. So let's add a pager, and I'll show you some cool things that we can do. So this new pager here, let's go into one and add a button, make that red. We'll double click out of this and go into two, enter that, and add a button. And let's make this green. Great. So you can see we have the red button on one and the green button on two. So imagine for a moment that you had built out all sorts of different things before adding messages. So in two, let's say you wanted this to be a play button. So here in one, Let's select this and let's add, let's actually get rid of this MIDI message. We don't need that. And with this OSC message, let's go ahead and get rid of name slash this. And we're gonna add plus and a constant, double click that. And we're gonna select down here and just say play. And that's all it is. The OSC message is play. And you can see on the iPad here, there is that button play and it would be sending this message. Now let's say you wanted in your second page of the pager to copy that message over. Now there's a couple ways you could accomplish this. You could go back, select this 
button. And then you could go into number two and paste that button. And you'll see that it will change its name, but it will have this message. But there is also another way to do this. So going back to this first page and this red button, select the button, and then let's go over here to edit, and then messages and copy all. And now we're gonna go to number two in the pager, open that up, select our green box, edit, messages, paste all. And what you can see is right down here, these are the two original messages that default came with the button. But here is our OSC message that we made on the red button. So this is great. If you have a whole bunch of different uh, signals that you've already put into a template, let's say that you have this as the play button and you have multiple different pages that you work on in your template, different things that you're doing, but you still want that play button. Of course, you could just copy the button and put it over, but if it's something more complicated, let's say local messages, for example, or several different messages, you could just copy those messages and paste them. You could also do something else. Let's go to page number two here, select this, edit, messages, and then you could delete only the MIDI message. And now it's gone from here. So you know how when we add a different object, let's go ahead and add a bunch of objects. Right click button, label, XY, a fader, and a radio. All of these different objects have default messages. So instead of having to click through and remove all of those messages, you can select all, edit, messages, delete, all messages. And now you go in there and they're all gone and they're clean, ready for you to start working with. This specifically being able to delete all of the messages on all the different objects you create, I think is super helpful because I like to clear out that clutter of different messages that are being sent because I have had the experience, especially in a DAW with multiple VSTs, that sometimes a wary signal will change certain settings in a different VST. So to avoid that, I don't want any messages to accidentally be sent. So I'm gonna remove anything I'm not using. The last thing I want to mention is the new patch storage page for Touch OSC. Now this was made by community members and it's a great spot where people are sharing different templates and scripts that you can use inside of your own template. And of course, there's also the GitHub page that Felix manages from the community and there's a lot of great examples and modules there for you to use in your own templates. So hopefully these updates will be helpful for you and your template and you learned something today. So like this video and subscribe to the channel. Lots more to come with Touch OSC and of course all the other interesting and different and difficult music production software out there. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.